Mylapse enthusiasts out there on the interwebs, this is Jay, aka Mylapse. Uh, today I'm going to show you something pretty cool. I'm going to show you how to do a HDR time lapse setup using the Dynamic Perception Stage Zero Dolly and the MX2 controller. Uh, you can see what I've got set up here in the living room is a one tripod situation. Just going to do kind of a, a rise up from that area over there over to this window over here. Got lots of fun stuff set up in the foreground. Lots of dynamic range here. A really bright outside and deep shadows down here. So perfect situation for HDR time lapse to pick up the entire scene. You can probably see from the 5D that the highlights are completely blown out here. Um, so that's what HDR is all about, is getting the um, dynamic range of a scene all the way from the very bright highlights down to the shadows or the dark. So to capture my scene today, I'm going to be using the Pentax K7 with a 15mm Sigma fisheye lens. Nice wide lens to capture a really kind of dynamic movement here. Um, and the reason I'm using the K7 is because it's got probably one of the best auto bracketing system, uh, otherwise, otherwise known as AEB, Auto Exposure Bracketing. The K7 at its widest can do five shots with two EV spacings in between shots. So that's a pretty wide dynamic range of shots, five shots, going two steps each. So that's ten stops of dynamic range added to the um, existing, say, ten to twelve stops of range. So I could probably go on and on about um, different cameras and their AEB advantages and disadvantages, but uh, instead let's just get down to the nitty gritty here and talk about how I've set up the K7. First and foremost, I have the mode dial set to manual up here. Very important, you want to always shoot manual so that uh, you don't have shift in exposure as the sequence goes on. Uh, this will make it the most stable and the most uh, flicker free. Also, of course, the lens is um, set to manual focus so that it won't go ahead and try to refocus. I've already got my focus set. I'm going to shoot at f11 to get a lot of depth of field here. To set up the auto exposure bracketing on the K7, press the top or the upper button in the four button dial system. And that brings up, oh, she's falling asleep on me here. So press that. That brings up uh, a series of uh, options here. This one over here with the plus minus and the little gradations behind it is the exposure bracketing setup. And then here's your, your range here. You use your back dial here to dial the amount of stops between the frames. There you can see it goes all the way up to two and the front dial is how many shots. So there's three and there's five. So once that's all set up, we hit OK in the center. So now the exposure bracketing is all set up. And I've gone ahead and um, worked out my exposure already on this, but what you want to do is try to get from your highest exposure to your lowest exposure, basically highlights all the way down to the shadows. So. Let's give it a quick go here. I'm going to press the button and hold it down. And there it went through all the brackets. A quick note there, you notice that um, it took a little while for the files to actually save onto the memory card. That's going to be an important factor. I'm going to have to make sure that my next shot doesn't happen before that's done with because you know, if you're doing this this style of shooting and you begin your next sequence or your next series of exposures before files have reached the, or the buffer is cleared, should I say, then what's going to happen is over time the buffer is going to basically back up and you might lose some shots. So that's an important factor when shooting HDR time lapse. For this particular scene, I don't think I'm going to run into that problem because I've got a lot of sun here. I'm going to do pretty long intervals. So 
let's look at the uh, results of my exposures here. I'm going to hit the play button. Here you can see uh, here's it's just picking up the highlights and let's go through a little more highlight and now we're starting to see a little bit of the interior and even more of the interior, kind of the mids and now there's the actual interior so that picks up pretty much everything so I'm all the way I can see detail right down here even in the uh, deep shadows here and all the way up to the highlights way up here these really high highlights so here we are on the MX2 side of the equation. As you can see, here's the shutter cable heading up to the K7. Uh, here's our 12 volt power supply coming in. Uh, and then here's our cable heading off to the motor. The first thing we need to determine is how long the MX2 is going to hold down the shutter to allow the K7 to go through its entire AEB sequence, its auto bracket sequence. Now, the K7 has a feature in it that's kind of a one-touch AEB, so you can just trigger it once and it'll go through the entire AEB. But that's not the case with um, all cameras, so to illustrate a point here, I'm just going to, I have that feature off on the camera, so we're going to set the exposure time long enough for the five shots to fire off on the K7. So that's in the camera area of the menu, so we're going to hit the far left button here to go into the menu system. Oops, I hit it twice actually, so I'm going to back up. Now let's go down to the camera settings, and what we're looking for, of course, is the exposure time. Here it is, so I'm going to enter in. Uh, I've got it set for two seconds right now. I have a feeling that's not going to be enough. Uh, the the K7 on the K7 the longest exposure is one second, so I bet it's going to be a little bit longer. What I'm going to do real quickly here is just hold it down and kind of count off how long it takes. So here I go. Hold it down. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. That was about three seconds. I th I mean, let's and let's keep it safe. Let's go up to three and a half seconds. So we're going to increase this value up to 3, yeah, that's close enough, um, 3,400 milliseconds, so close to 3.5 seconds. Uh, it's going to hold down the, it's going to trigger for 3.5 seconds, and let's see if that will be enough to get all five shots off. Enter, then I'm going to go back up to the top. Uh, make sure, yeah, the K7 is ready. And let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, got all five of them. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. So I'm going to turn it off. And so that's enough. The three, three and a half seconds uh, of exposure, uh, holding the trigger down. Um, allows the AEB to go through all five of its shots. So we're looking good on that front. Now uh, I'm going to do something kind of fancy here with this movement. I'm actually going to have it slowly ramp up to speed and then slow down at the end to a stop. So it's going to basically take a certain amount of shots to get up to speed and then it's going to um, decelerate that same amount of shots. So how we do that is we go into the menu system. This is a setup for axis one. So I'm going to go in and what we're going to set up is the ramp shots. So this is a, the amount of shots it's going to take to get up to speed and to decelerate to a stop. So if we go in here, I've already set it up to 100 shots to get up to speed and to slow down. So that's all set. I'm going to hit enter. And that's all we need to do for that. Now we need to let the system know how many shots total so that it knows um, out of that total it's going to take 100 for the start and 100 for the stop. So let's go down and that's in the camera section. So let's enter and go in and there's the max shots. 
I've done a little bit of testing here uh, and I've already figured this one out. 360 shots at the the amount of movement per shot that I've already determined uh, I'm gonna do 0.2 inches per shot. We've got 360 shots um, 100 of them will be acceleration and 100 of them will be deceleration uh, which means about 160 of them will be at the um, top speed, if you will. Okay, so let's uh, enter that. So we've got our amount of shots to get up to up to speed and our amount of shots to get down, which are 100 and 100. Our maximum shots is set up. So now let's go back to the top here. And I've, like I said, I already did some testing and I figured out that 0.2 inches per shot is going to be just right. So I should mention I'm right now I'm in the fixed move shoot move mode so I'm going to go in and show you that too. In Axis 1 I have the fixed SMS which is fixed shoot move shoot set to on. So what that basically means, I, I've talked about this before, is that it's going to take a shot and then it's going to move that that um, 0.2 inches but since I've already set up this ramping effect uh, that's kind of the top speed so that's basically everything right there um, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the interval quite a bit here I have a sunny scene and I want to take this all the way to sunset you know essentially let me check my time real quickly here. Yeah, it's about four o'clock and the sun is going to set at about 6.30 tonight. So if I set it to, if I set it to 30 seconds, that ought to be about that time period. A little less than, eh, it's about, it seems like it's about right. Oh, come on now. I want 30 seconds. Oops, passed it. Wait, Thirty. Okay. So now we got our entire setup here. Um, its top speed is going to be the top speed or top um, movement per shot is going to be um, 0.2 inches. Uh, it's going to go for 360 shots. 100 shots will be the uh, ramp up to 0.2 inches and then um, 100 shots will be the ramp out of 0.2 inches so and then we've got our exposure time set so that's all set I guess there's oh there's only one other thing we need to uh, make sure of here and let's go in and make sure that we have a little delay so that even after the exposure is finished we can make sure that that there's just a little bit of delay there so let's go back down here into the camera settings and go into exposure delay. Oh, and it's already set to one second. So there's, it's going to go through, it's going to trigger for that three and a half seconds. Then it's going to wait for another one second before it moves on to the next position. So we should be good there, I think. So let's back it back up. Everything's all set up. So, uh, yeah. Oh, one more thing, I'm just going to go ahead and go into the K7, into the menu system, and I'm going to f give it one last format, just so that I can make sure that I have a nice, clean card to start with, and also that the brackets, that I won't have any kind of extraneous shots, that every single set will be there for my um, HDR bracketing. So let's go ahead and uh, send this thing on its way and see what happens here. So 
that was basically the entire setup right there. As you can see, uh, Lily has decided to go and get in the scene right now, so I'm sure we're gonna get a little bit of uh, cat action along with uh, the rest of this shot here. But it should be pretty interesting. The shot's gonna kind of rise up, as I was saying, and uh, move from generally that side up to kind of framing in this window over here and some some of our fun uh, paper mache Halloween decorations that we have going on around here. Um, so the system's going now, so you can kind of hear it. Uh, let's give it a second here and probably start to go. 30 seconds per is pretty long. So there we go. So there it goes. Five shots off. Little delay, and now it's starting to move on its way up. So what I'll do here is, um, I think I'll go ahead and set up the 5D with uh, its own interval timer over here, so that we can kind of watch uh, watch the scene as it goes. So that's ba that's the basics of setting up uh, an HDR time lapse uh, with a ramped start and ramped stop using the uh, Dynamic Perception Stage Zero Dolly with the MX2 controller. Um, yeah, as you noticed, again, the MX2 controller is, we're still waiting on the enclosure. Hopefully that's going to be in our hands pretty soon here, uh, so we can start showing it off uh, with its proper enclosure. Otherwise, uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Hope you learned a little bit along the way, and um, Maybe what I'll do for a second part of this series is to show you how to post-process um, an HDR time-lapse because that that is its own monster, uh, or I should say, that's a monster of its own character. So um, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of walk you guys through that process as a follow-up to um, this shooting process. Thanks for watching, and um, this is Jay signing off.